All right, everyone, it is here, and it is time to start taking a look at the SWAT X1 from Killer Instinct. So first off, this is a pre-production model uh, that KI sent me just to do some testing on, do some reviews on. Um, this is not a full production model, so some things that you might see on this bow, it may be a little bit different when they actually launch the bow into production. But I wanted to do a video for you guys tonight and, and just do an overview. So as you can see, we're out here in my pole barn. It's dark outside. It's also windy outside. I just didn't get around to this till later than I wanted to. So what I thought we would do is kind of just an overview of the bow. My first impressions, I haven't shot it. I haven't cocked it. I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, I also have my SWAT XP out here so we can kind of do some comparisons between the XP and the X1. And then what I was thinking we would do, and hopefully this works, hopefully it's not too loud out here in the barn, but I was just gonna put a target outside and turn my lights on um, and just shoot from in here in the barn at a close target just outside. Um, not for accuracy, not for anything like that, but just so one, we can kind of look at the difference in the cam systems and how they cock. And then hopefully this is a good area to do like a sound comparison of the XP versus the X1 when we shoot. So that's the plan. All right, everybody, first and foremost, let's just look at a top-down view of the X1, which is here on the left, XP here on the right, and just the size comparison of them. So I thought when I got my XP that this was a small compact crossbow. I mean, just look at how small and compact the X1 is. Uh, what I wanna do for you guys here, and I'm actually gonna set my phone down to do this, I want to take um, basically the longest length measurement and the longest width measurement. So what KI and most crossbow manufacturers um, advertise on their website, they usually take measurements uh, axle to axle on their bows. And then I believe, and if I am wrong, I will make a note of this on the video when I edit it. I believe they take their length measurement on the X1 from the end of the buttstock to the end of the limb pocket, which would be this right here. They don't include the limb block. And we'll go over this limb block here in a minute and kind of what it's there for. What I wanna do though, is I wanna take basically the longest length measurement and the longest width measurement. All right, you guys, please take these as just ballpark measurements. I'm writing on a paper towel with a Sharpie and just using a tape measure as best as I can here. But the SWAT X1, Longest point that would include those limb blocks on the end of it. Uh, I got 25 and a half inches and then the width cam to cam as best as I could. This was hard to measure because the, uh, the scope mount here kind of prevents me from going actual cam to cam. So I kind of had to eyeball it, but I was at about 13 inches. Uh, comparing that to the XP length from basically the longest point, which would be kind of the end here of the you know, the limb pocket and the, the bracket and fastener that hold the limbs on to the end of the buttstock. I had 27 and a quarter, and then width, cam to cam, 19 and 5 eighths. So certainly shorter and a whole lot narrower on the uncocked side of things. All right, guys, one other measurement that I want to share with you guys before we dive into some more details on the X1 here um, is, I guess you would call it length of pull. And I don't know the proper way to measure that. So the way I am measuring it is from the very tip of the trigger, just because that's easy for me, to the end of the buttstock. I'm doing that on both bows. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm a taller guy. I'm six foot three. I've got pretty long arms. And one of the concerns I had before I got the SWAT XP was that it was going to be too short, too compact, and just feel awkward, small when trying to shoot it. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised that it did not at all. It felt very comfortable to shoot. It did not feel too small. It felt much better to me than like the Raven R26 that I've held before. Um, so I wanted to see if the X1 uh, was similar in the way that it felt. Um, and it does to me just holding it but I measured on both bows, tip of trigger to end of buttstock, and they're both the same. So me, again, with the tape measure, just ballparking, on both of them, I got 13 and three quarter inches. Um, so I'm really happy about that. The, the length that they shaved had nothing to do with length of pull. 
All right, guys, I got the X1 up here on my workbench. So I just wanted to go through what's the same, what is different on the bow, and some of the things that I am really, really happy that KI uh, updated, even if they're small things, or honestly, even the things that they kept the same. So Actitec barrel system, that is the same. Uh, it looks a little bit different in the front. They did a little bit of different uh, riser design in the way they machined out where you load your bolt. But essentially, the AccuTac barrel system is the same in how it functions, uh, what it does for your accuracy and your bolt flight. That is all maintained on the SWAT X1. The trigger system, to my knowledge, that is the same. It looks the same. Um, it is listed on the KI website as the same three pound trigger pull, just like the XP. I don't know if they tweaked anything internally with the trigger system, um, but if it's the same, I am a happy camper because I absolutely love the trigger system on my XP. And we're gonna shoot this here in a minute and see if this feels the same. But trigger looks like that has been maintained as well as the safety mechanism. So ambidextrous safety back here on the buttstock. Um, that is the same, your cheek rest, that's the same that you flip up when you cock the bow, flip it back down after it's cocked, and the way you load your bolt, again, the same with that bolt lever that you flip to uh, drop your bolt into the loaded position. Uh, the scope that comes with the bow, same as the SWAT XP, the Lumex speed ring scope, which is a fantastic scope. Even if you don't shoot KI crossbows and you're watching this video, this scope is a fantastic upgrade for any crossbow. The reticle is great. The scope is high quality. It's not very expensive for what you get with this scope. So I, I love this scope. I'm glad that they're sticking with it. I've had it on my Ripper 415. Uh, I had it on my SWAT XP. The fact that it's coming with the X1 um, is phenomenal. It's a great scope. So I'm glad that they're sticking with this. All right, guys, now let's go over what is different on the bow. And we're going to start with the biggest difference that you guys have all probably noticed with pictures or whatever, and that is the cam system. So this is a new cam system. This is the X cam system. It is a 50% let off cam system that is supposed to be easier to draw, uh, smoother to shoot, less vibration, which I, I love. I, and I haven't shot it yet, but from what I've heard, what I've seen and kind of the direction that CAD is going with this cam system, I really like it. If you take a look at the XP and you hold the cam side by side, I mean, you can see a big difference in cam size, cam profile. Uh, the XP cam is very aggressive compared to the X1 cam. So I think this is a great upgrade. This cam system is also on the Fatal X. Um, and I just, I like the direction that KI went with this. I think they listened to their customers and, and gave them a really good solution of still maintaining speed, still maintaining power, but giving them something that's easier to cock, easier to draw, smoother to shoot. And we're gonna test that here in a minute. Um, I have not shot it yet. That is just, uh, you know, kind of just the first overview type of thing of the new X cam system. Foot stirrup. They moved to an adjustable foot stirrup. I think this is pretty cool. I didn't have any problems with the XP foot stirrup, which was just a non-adjustable uh, foot stirrup that was 90 degrees to the barrel. I liked it. I liked that it was 90 degrees. I thought it was pretty easy to cock that way. Um, I also liked being able to use it as a shooting rest. But the fact that this one, you can use it in that 90 degree position or you can adjust it. You can loosen these screws and you can swing it up to that kind of more traditional parallel to the barrel or parallel to the crossbow rail, whatever you want to call it, uh, position. You can do that too. So whatever is more comfortable for you to be able to cock it, shoot it, uh, this now has adjustability compared to the X1. So I think that's a nice feature. These. Uh, I'm just calling them limb blocks. I don't know the proper name for them. These, I think, are a great addition for this bow, especially when cocking, um, you know, the X1 or the, you know, when I would use to cock my XP in the 90 degree foot stirrup position. Um, these are basically here to prevent you from scuffing up or causing damage to your limb pocket or your limbs. So the XP, so let me grab it here again. Um, I noticed this a lot when I was cocking it on my patio, uh, which I used to then put like a towel or a pillow down when I was cocking it on dirt roads or two tracks or other things. 
I mean, I scuffed up my, my limbs, um, you know, the, kind of this bracket of the limb pocket that holds the limbs in place. I scuffed them up quite a bit. Um, so the fact that they just added these little blocks to the end of it, just to help you, keep you from damaging your limb pockets, your limbs, that kind of stuff. Super simple addition, but I think it's a great one. Um, I think it's the one where they probably, you know, okay, I'd listen to their customers and as simple of a change that this is, I think this is a, a great addition to the X1. Um, another thing that they changed, which I am super, super happy about, is the knocks on the bolt. So the SWAT X1 now shoots your standard half moon knock that is not glued in. It is just a interference fit, so you can twist it if you want to. You can put lighted knocks in it if you want to. You can change your knock, whatever. Went back to a half moon knock. Instead of shooting the arc knock that was on the XP, um, which was a glued in knock, a proprietary knock. You had to use this knock on the XP. This was, honestly, this was probably when I did reviews on the XP, as much as I loved it, um, I did not have any problems with this knock system other than the fact that I just couldn't shoot a lighted one. Um, and I'm a big fan of lighted knocks. So the fact that they moved back to just your standard half moon knock on this bow, thank you, KI. Um, this is probably the, the thing that I'm honestly most excited about with the, with the X1. Um, and they also moved back to a 20 inch bolt. So I've got just your regular, um, your uh, KI Hyperbolt here. That is what is gonna come with the SWAT X1. It's a 20 inch bolt. The XP came with the uh, SWAT XP bolts that were 22 inches. And you know, that's, that's not something that I really had any issues with shooting a 22 inch bolt. Um, you can still shoot, at least to my knowledge, a 22 inch bolt if you wanted to out of this, as long as it has your standard half moon knock. So if you get aftermarket bolts and you wanted a 22 inch one, uh, you could still shoot it out of this bow. It's just gonna protrude farther um, outside of the barrel than the 20 inch one. But this just gives, you know, going back to a 20 inch bolt with a half moon knock, this just gives people a lot more options for aftermarket bolts when, you know, if you wanna change up your bolts, if you wanna do some tinkering, if you wanna do some aftermarket bolt builds, whatever, uh, it just gives you a lot more options to be able to shoot out of this bow compared to the SWAT XP. So they made some great additions. I mean, my three favorites honestly are the knock, going back to a half moon knock, the cam system, the fact that we've got let off now and we're something that's smoother to draw, smoother to shoot, easier to cock, uh, and only losing 10 feet per second. I love that. and. Honestly, my third favorite thing is the fact that they kept the same trigger because I love this trigger. So a couple things that are kind of question marks, um, but I will give you what I think KI is gonna go with on the foreign grip and the pistol grip. I don't know for sure, um, but just to be perfectly transparent with you guys, this bow that I have, these are 3D printed prototypes of the foreign grip and the pistol grip. Um, everything I've seen, talking foreign grip on the KI website, it looks like it's gonna be this type of grip profile where it's gonna be, a, again, a, a thinner grip, um, something that is pretty, pretty much uh, the same width as the barrel of the bow, which I really like. I like this thin grip. Um, it's, you know, it's similar to that of the XP. Um, I don't know if they're gonna put like a rubber overmold on that grip or not. Um, but everything that I've, I've seen, at least on the website and stuff, it looks like that four end grip profile is going to be a thinner one, um, which I like. I personally like that. I'm not a big fan of kind of the big fat four end grips. Um, and that's just me personally. I do like the fact though, that, um, they added a big Picatinny rail down here on the bottom of this bow. So you can move and you can adjust this four end grip on the XP, sorry, let me grab it again. Um, that one you couldn't, that one was just mounted to one position on the bottom of the barrel. So adding some adjustability on the foreign grip, I think that is a good, good addition, good upgrade to the X1. Um, talking pistol grip, you know, me holding this, even this being a 3D printed plastic one, 
it feels fine to me. I hope, um, and my guess is that they probably will go to some kind of like Hogue style grip like they had on the XP. I really liked this grip. Um, and I think most XP shooters really liked this grip. So my guess is they will probably go to something similar to this or some type of a rubber overmolded grip on the X1, but I, I do not know for sure. All right, so change of plans. We're gonna shoot outside. Uh, this is Saturday. I was filming yesterday on Friday. Inside the barn was a little too loud. Um, I don't think it did a very good job giving you guys a representation of how the X1 sounds uh, compared to the XP. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna film uh, the draw cycle, me cocking the bows with the rope cocker. We're not gonna do the crank today. We're gonna touch on the difference in the new crank versus the old crank in another video. Um, so we're gonna draw the bow. I'll kind of tell you how it feels, show you how it cocks. Um, and then we're gonna shoot them side by side, not for accuracy, but just for a sound comparison. Uh, so you guys can kind of hear the difference and then I'll go over kind of my final thought. All right, we're gonna do the SWAT XP first. I'm gonna draw that one, and then I'm gonna do the SWAT X1. Uh, I'm gonna set my camera down. I'm just gonna draw both of them right next to each other so you guys can kind of see the difference, then we'll talk about it. Okay, there's the SWAT XP. Okay, so I got them both cocked. Um, so the the start of the X1, it feels like the start of the XP, I would say like the first half of it. Uh, feels pretty similar, um, but then you definitely feel that let off. That back half, much, much easier um, than the SWAT XP. And, and one thing that I, I guess I like drawing that right now, on the XP, I guess, and on the X1, you kind of get two clicks when you cock the bow. So one click is your, um, like basically the trigger mechanism actually grabbing the, um, the string. If you stop right there, sometimes you might notice that your safety didn't reset from the fire to the safe position. So if you actually pull just a little bit more, you'll get a second click. That is then your safety um, switching back to the safe position. So on the XP, that is a little bit hard just because it's like one more little oomph to get that safety to click in. On the X1, it was really smooth because you had that let off helping you. Really easy, I almost, I don't even really think I heard or felt two clicks. It just kind of went up all in the same kind of motion um, and, and reset. Here, I'll show you too what the bows look like while they're cocked. All right, here they are side by side cocked. I mean, look at how narrow that X1 is. Your string angle, pretty much the same. All right, something I wanted to touch on really quick that I just noticed and I wanted to show you guys that I think is a good job KI. Um, on the XP, so you've got a fixed four end grip. It's not adjustable. And then there's a small Picatinny rail section for your single point sling that I've got on my bow right now. Love this sling, by the way. It's a really good sling. Um, what they did on the XP, or sorry, the X1, which is pretty cool, is obviously they made the foreign grip adjustable. But even if you move it all the way back to the basically where the trigger guard is, that foreign grip's got a little gap, so you can still get your single point sling in there. So no matter how far forward or far back you move this four end grip, you still got enough real estate to get your single point sling in there. So good job, KI, I like that. I hope this is the same profile of a four end grip for the Production X1. I like that a lot. All right, I got both bows back here behind me, just like we did with the draw. I'm gonna shoot the XP first, and then I'm gonna shoot the X1.
All right, you guys, so all in all, the X1, it is the real deal. Um, I think KI took an already fantastic crossbow in the SWAT XP, and they made it even better in the X1. And you know, some of the things that we talked about are little things, um, which I greatly appreciate those little things, like the going back to a standard half moon knock, um, this adjustable four end grip with a Picatinny rail so I can move it around, still get my single point sling in it, uh, the blocks on the top, I like that if you wanna you know, try cocking it in the 90 degree uh, foot stirrup position. Um, they kept the same trigger, kept the same scope, which I did not wanna see go away. You know, those little things, those add up. And those are, I think, um, an example of KI listening to their customers. And you know, me, you know, I critiqued some things as minor as they were because I love the SWAT XP. Uh, the fact that a lot of my critiques they listen to, and I think they listen to a lot of their other customers, you know, says a lot about KI. Um, and, and the X cam system, I will say, it is nice. Um, I definitely like it better than the XP cam system. Um, you know, the cocking, having that let off, kick in, wherever you wanna call it, you know, me ballparking between a half and two thirds of the way up. Um, it definitely helps, especially getting the getting the string to engage into the trigger mechanism and resetting the safety. And it is smoother. Um, it is definitely smoother to shoot. It is definitely quieter to shoot. The bow definitely has less vibration. And again, this bow, no string stops on it. Um, at least this prototype bow from the factory here. So all in all, I'm a big fan of the X1. Next video we're gonna do, we're gonna do some accuracy testing. We're gonna shoot some lighted knocks. Uh, I'm gonna pull some of the knocks out of the bolts that I have show you guys and and just confirm that you know you can shoot some aftermarket lighted knocks um and we're gonna see how this thing does actually sighted in on the range a little bit farther than 12 and 25 yards so i hope you guys enjoyed this video leave some comments for me if there's some other things that you want to see or clarification or whatever i'm gonna do my best to cram as much uh information on the swat x1 for you guys as i possibly can in the short amount of time that i have this bow so I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you did. And remember, be a sportsman, make a sportsman.